what's up guys um i was gonna do a quick update on the uh audi um got a, a new art well not new new to me uh rnse navigation unit to install in here i do have the audi symphony with the bows in here from the factory um but my other car that i built that this is supposed to replace uh had the navigation system in it uh so i want to put this navigation system in here so i'm going to show how to how to basically rig up some stuff to remove the radio because unfortunately since i live in the united states or maybe because i just live in the area of georgia that i live in nobody keeps the radio removal tools uh on the shelves so i have to get a little creative i have a set of ignition uh feeler gauges that i'm going to use to uh pop the little clips on the radio to remove it but i'm going to show you that how to remove it's really easy to remove the radio but i'm going to remove the radio and then throw this rns thing in here and uh make sure everything works and everything communicates the way it's supposed to because i do have satellite radio in here and i want to make sure that it still works but the satellite uh unit is a separate unit that's in it's mounted under the back of the uh rear shelf uh it's a totally separate computer if if you don't know um plus it uses the shark fin antenna that's on the roof so uh yeah hopefully everything will just plug and play and we'll be ready to rock and roll so like i said i'm using some feeler gauges that i had that are for setting uh ignitions um it's an old set that I had sitting around, but I'm gonna just use these and I'm gonna pop them straight into these little slits right here and bypass the little spring clips that are holding the radio in. And uh, hopefully everything goes smooth. All right guys, so as you can see, I got my little clips in here. They're pulling in on the springs. You can actually see them being sprung back. This one was a little bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, I don't know why but it kept wanting to pop on top of the spring, but I finally got it to come loose and then it just slides right out. So in order to do this swap in this car uh, with the factory Symphony 2 radio, swapping it over to the RNSE, um, you have to have this adapter harness. <clears throat> I had this harness from my last car and then you need this antenna adapter and you have to fit your diversity antenna into this fitting. Uh, I bought this kit off of eBay when I had my last car, but I sold that head unit and I bought another one and it didn't work. So now I'm installing another one. So we'll see. So you have to remove the outer casing off of the diversity antenna. And all you do, it's the same on the one that was on here, but it was yellow. But you pop that little purple tab out, and then you can slide the wire right in, and then pop the purple tab back in, and it'll lock it in. All right, guys, so the first thing I need to do before I go changing the radio out or pulling the radio out is I need to add this extension cable because my car already has the factory shark fin antenna. Now, if you don't have the factory shark fin antenna, you can add it. I added it to my last car. All you have to do is get a little Dremel tool. Uh, measure over from your from your seam right here and from your seam on the other side and mark the center and then i measured off the car that i took the antenna off of from the back windscreen to to the uh, back of the square that's cut out for this and then you, i just used a dremel tool and cut out the square for this to sit in and as long as you have the seal and everything uh, it won't leak um, but there's three antenna leads that come out of here. There's a, a brown one, a green one, and a blue one. The brown one and the green one go to your satellite radio. And the blue one is for the navigation system. Now, if you didn't have navigation from the factory, the blue one will actually just be sitting up here in the corner of your uh, back window. Uh, and that's what this extension cable is for. You just plug it into your existing connection right here and then run it down the body line of the car up to the back of the radio, and then you can plug it into the radio and your nav system will work off the original shark fin antenna. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do now. So in order to do this, you need to pull this rear panel off the back of your uh, headliner. So the very rear panel, uh, right above your headrest, pull that off and you just pull straight down on it and it'll come off. All right, so as you can see, is just held in with those four clips one of mine stayed in the roof so i'm gonna have to pull it out with pliers and put it back in but it, you just pull straight down on it and it comes off now you'll be able to see hold on let me move that panel out of my way so there's a, there's all your connections to your diversity antenna if i can get the sun to quit shining on it so there's your three connections for your diversity antenna you should have 
the other connections for the satellite radio and for the uh, additional antenna sitting over here. So let me see if I can figure out where they've got them hidden. All right, so in order for uh, satellite radio to continue working, you have to replace this box if you're going from a Symphony 2 to a RNSE. Um, so this is my original box that was in the car. I, I actually have an active subscription to Sirius right now. Um, but what you do is you remove this entire tray. So I probably should have had all this together. But anyway, this, this box is snapped onto here. You just push these two tabs down and you can slide the box out. This whole assembly is stuck in the back side of this unit. And this is all bolted in in the back passenger panel of your trunk or back driver's side panel of your trunk. So you gotta remove the, the rear uh, cover right there. Uh, it just pulls up, pulls straight up. You have to pick up this tray and then it'll, there's a little lip that sits underneath it and you can pull it out. You have to remove this uh, cargo net uh, hook point. It's two uh, Torx bits. I wanna say the T30s. And then, you just pop this panel loose. You got a clip here and a clip here. You've got a hook right here. And I believe there's another hook further up in there. I can't remember. But then you've got a bolt here and a bolt here. And I believe there's supposed to be another bolt over here, but it looks like this box is broken. Uh, so it looks like somebody was in here. Plus, I know somebody was in here because these bolts were loose. So um, I'm going to go ahead and switch this box out because uh, I was looking at the antenna and so on, the, on the XM box, when you have the shark feed, you have to, in order to have Sirius XM hooked up on your car, you have to have these antenna wires uh, run from the shark fin to this box. That's where the Sirius XM gets its antenna signal from. But then you've also got a cellular phone antenna in there and you have a uh, GPS antenna in there. So you've got a total of four connections inside that shark fin antenna. Um, I just wanted to verify that all of this was hooked up because the, it looks like the color of the wires up there where I'm trying to hook in my GPS antenna are green and brown as well. And I knew that these were green and brown. So I'll update after I look at it. Okay guys, so what I did is in the passenger side, in the roof, there's a screw right here holding it in. Unscrew that and pull this down. Then you'll be able to see both of the antennas right there. You got a green one and a brown one. I've hooked into the green one. And what I'm gonna do is I've got the panel pulled loose right here. So I'm gonna feed the wire. Now, if I was doing this, when I when I change my headliner, this is the only reason I'm running it like this right now because I'm planning on changing these sail panels and the headliner to black. So I'm not gonna run this permanent because I'm not gonna pull this entire panel off because they're an absolute pain in the ass to pull off. So I'm gonna run it down this panel and I'm gonna run it down through here and kind of tuck it in here and tuck it underneath this rear shelf and then I'll run it behind this interior panel under the seat and then I'll get it into the track and take it the rest of the way to the front. All right, so as you can see, I've got the wire run down through here. I got it run up here and then run down through here. I actually bent my cardboard here a little bit. I didn't mean to, um, but there's a clip right here that's really hard to pull out. Um, but then this panel just pulled forward and I've run the wire down inside of here and I stuck my hand in through here and pulled the wire out underneath here. So now I'm gonna feed the rest of the wire through and then I'll pick up when I flip the seat up and I get all these panels back in and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so now that I've got it here, I'm, I'm just gonna shove the wire down through here and it'll be on the bottom side of the seat. All right, so now that I have the wire run down through here, I'm just gonna run it underneath this trim piece all the way up into the front footwell. So I pay no attention to the dirty ass car. I, I freaking live in this thing because I drive about 60,000 miles a year. But that's why I have to have satellite radio and I really want the navigation because I hate using my phone to do it. Um, I could go with a newer navigation unit that 
wouldn't be outdated like this unit, but I want this car to be as much factory as possible. So, um, but yeah, just continue to run the wire up. It'll run up behind this footwell right here, and then we'll run it up underneath the dash over to where this uh, stereo is. All right, guys, so the only way that I could get this to register so that I could uh, do the Sirius uh, through my web app was I had to uh, get the Sirius ID number and type it in because it does not show in the radio. So let me turn this song off so that I don't get hit for copyright shit. All right, so... All right, anyway, uh, when you go in here to set up and you go to receiver ID, serial number, see, it wasn't coming up. Um, originally, it was coming up with all zeros. So I had to uh, I had to type the number in off the box, and I guess once it gets activated, it, it registers. But it did not want to show that info uh, when I first hooked the radio up. So... Now that I've got everything hooked up, I've got the wire run underneath the dash and going up over into the radio. I've got the Sirius hooked up, back panels all the way back together. Um, if you hook it up with the wrong uh, Sirius satellite box or XM box, it will actually say that this radio is, or this vehicle is set up for a basic installation of Sirius. Uh, please contact your dealership or whatever. And it's because that box is bad or it's not correct for this radio. Um, I have an A box, which is what I was using originally. So this was my original A box that I had in the car and it was an XM unit. And now I have a serious box, um, but it works. I just had to go into my account and change my radio ID number from this number to this number and worked perfectly. It took about two to three minutes for it to send the signal. I made sure that I got the preview channel on the radio before I did the code, because if you do not get the preview channel, uh, the radio is not gonna work. It won't send the code if you can't receive the uh, preview channel. So yeah, got everything working. So now I'm just gonna push the radio into place and call it a day. All right, guys, just wanted to show you how it looks finished up. I uh, got the antenna working. It's registering where I really am. So, uh, yeah, everything seems to be working the way that it's supposed to. Um, all my serious stuff is working. Um, regular radio is working. So, yeah, everything's working the way that I want it to. Um, the media uh, SD cards are working as well. So got two different SD cards in here and the navigation system screen opens up the way it's supposed to so I can access my two SD cards so you got one SD card here one here and then you've also got the DVD drive for the navigation CD unit so yeah everything appears to be working good it sounds way better than the original Audi Symphony radio and uh Luckily, I got one that didn't have any damage to the radio. All the buttons still have all the writing on them and everything, uh, which is the same way as my radio that came out of here. My radio that came out of here is basically in mint condition. Everything works on it. CD player works, tape player works. All the buttons have perfect writing on them. Nothing's rubbed away. Um, so I may hold on to it just in case I ever take this back out. But I've got some paint bubbling up on this one. But all my... All my accessories work. Um, my glove box door is not broken. Uh, armrest isn't broken. It's all still together and stuff. So, yeah. Um, but I don't use either one of those because I don't want to break them. Because I know if I do use them, I'm going to break them, which is sad. But, uh, yeah, everything's working on the car. Uh wound up using the green antenna off of the shark fin <coughs> and running it up to the back of the radio and hooking it up and it took about five minutes for it to register my gps location but everything's working and uh yeah really digging it i've uh, been enjoying it for the last couple days and uh yeah really happy with it 
All right, guys, so I hope that helped anybody that's wanting to do an RNSE uh, retrofit into their vehicle. Uh, I know I had a little uh, misspeak on how many leads were coming out of the antenna, but on my when I retrofitted it, I bought one off of Amazon, and uh, it only had three antenna leads off of it. I was unaware that the factory one had four leads coming off of it until I did a little bit more research and discovered that the other one was for a cellular uh, antenna for... Uh, if you've got the phone package, which this car does not have the phone package. Um, but you need an F box or I think an E box will work with this. I'm not 100% certain, but I know an F box will, um, for your Sirius satellite to work with the RNSE. And, uh, you need a female to female Fokker extension cable, um, in order to do the, uh, navigation antenna. And I just bought that off of Amazon. It was like six bucks and uh, bought the uh, unit for the Sirius XM off of eBay, cost me $55. And uh, so yeah, everything worked perfect. And uh, so like always, please like, comment, share, subscribe if this uh, video helped you out in any way. Uh, really appreciate all the support that I've been seeing and uh, see you next time. Have a great day.